what's up tribe how you guys doing go ahead and hit that subscribe button and i hope you like this video this is going to be your review for bet sisters season 2 episode 15 so we start the episode off where we left off last week with <clears throat> danny coming home seeing preston on the floor beat up in front of her apartment um you know he explains to her hey my brothers did this to me you know they said some things i didn't like i said some things they didn't like and we did what we did he said, it's, she was like, well, you need to get to the hospital. He was like, no, nah, it's cool. He said, I've been more beat up than this, you know, in the rodeo. Me and my brothers, you know, we've been, you know, we've gotten into fights before. It just is what it is. And he, he doesn't really want to get into all of the details and the specifics of why him and his brothers were fighting. So then she tells him, well, listen, they came down to the, the airport to see me. And he was like, they did. And I think then he realizes, okay, well, she knows what's up. She know why we was fighting. She know what it's about. And so, you know, he tells her, she tells him that, you know, she ran him over with the car. And he was like, oh, that's why one of them was living. Okay. He said, well, good for you, you know. And so she tells him, she says, listen, let me say this. Danny and Preston are actually becoming my favorite couple. Now that Danny has stopped playing games and let her guard down and is opening up. Like, I was so proud of her last week when she would not let those women deter her. She was like, no, I know Preston. And there's something wrong. This is not him. You know, the the Danny of the beginning of this season would have been like, see, see, he really is racist. See, he's just playing me. Uh-huh. Oh, I was a bet to him. Like, she would be on a whole nother trajectory. And so, kudos, Danny. Kudos for growth, okay? Um, so... You know, she, so again, she tries to get him to go to the hospital. He was like, listen, I just need to soak in a, a hot bath. I will be okay. She was like, okay, well, I can handle that, you know. Um, and she tells him, she said, listen, I don't want to come in between you and your family. You know, at the end of the day, it's been cool. It's been great. But family is family. He was like, uh, them my half brothers. I don't even know them brothers like that. <laughs> you know, but he's letting her know, listen, I'm not going to break up with you for them, especially not over some racist shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, so the next day, you know, they, they, um, you know, she gets, he gets some sleep and everything. And the next day she was like, well, what are you going to do? Like you, you can't go back. He was like, well, I can't go back there. You know, I'm gonna have to get a hotel. And she said, well, why do you need to get a hotel room? Like you can stay here. And he was like, Danny, I don't know about that. You know, he was like, are you sure you want me here? And he was like, yes, I, I want you here. I mean, she was like, yes, I want you here. And then he offered to pay the whole rent. You know, that was a whole nother, whoo, you know. She was like, what, what, what? Okay, cool, you know. So, um, I'm happy for them. I hope they're not doing too much too soon, but I'm, I'm definitely happy for them. Okay, so Calvin is, um, down to the, um, down to the apartment, you know, um, um, oh shoot, now I can't think of his name now, but you know, his roommate comes home from work and Calvin is getting dressed on his way out on a, you know, he going his way to the park. He, he done met somebody online. He on his way on a date and he's trying to talk to him like, Calvin, stop playing. Like, you know that you still like Sabrina. Sabrina still like you. Why don't you just call her? And he was like, nah. Uh, you know, she ain't never returned none of my phone calls. And so it is what it is. She ain't feeling me no more. I'm going to do what I do. And he tries to talk him out of it. But listen, I'm with you, Calvin. I told y'all I'm over the Calvin and Sabrina storyline. So I could care less at this point what either one of them do. Okay, Calvin, you going out there with your online date. And you going to get your freak on. And you going and you, 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 you tear the club up. Okay, you going to find you a woman that don't care that you wear lace panties. Okay, she going she not going to drug test you behind your, behind your back. Like, Go and find you a woman that going to accept you for you, okay? Because I'm over it. I'm sick of it. I'm done. Okay. Now, okay, what happens next, child? So then we have, um, um, not Danny, um, shoot. Oh, gosh. If you don't watch the show, it's been a, it only been a week and I can't remember none of these people's names. Um, Andy, Lord, thank you. Andy comes home from work and she got an apartment full of roses. Listen, well, flowers. They wasn't just roses, they was flowers. Listen, listen. My first instinct was, 
You mean to tell me that she ain't changed the locks on that apartment yet? But it does look like she did change the locks because she ends up calling down to the front desk and telling them to come and get the flowers because the, the doorman must have let must have delivered them to her apartment. So I was like, okay, at least Gary did not deliver the roses to her apartment. Because all I'm thinking was, I know that girl done got them locks changed. Like, I know she don't still let this man run around with them damn keys to his lock. She calls Karen to tell Karen about it. And, of course, Karen is like, so what you going to do? You going to call him? What's up? You going to give in? You going to call him? And she was like, no, I'm not going to call him. She was like, mm, okay, then. Because, you know, Andy does this. They do this breakup to make up things. So ain't nobody really impressed because you went 24 hours without calling Gary. Give us 24 days and maybe, just maybe we might believe you. But right now, girl, girl. So the doorman comes up and they end up having this whole conversation about the owner of the building who had, who's in the penthouse suite. And Andy ends up gossiping with this guy about how the owner of the building hits on her and how the rumor is this, this, and this, and this, this. Because they started off because he was basically letting them know that the rumor around the, the, the building complex is that she had this dude who, you know, got her, build, got her apartment, you know, raided by the police and everything else. You know, small building, people gossip. So then she started gossiping about the guy that's in the penthouse that owns it. Well, come to find out that the doorman is his son. So she just sat there and told the man, told the little, well, he the little boy, the young, the young guy, all the business about what his father doing around the apartment, but, you know, coming on to women in the apartment. He was like, mm, his wife ain't going to like that. And I knew then when he said, oh, his wife ain't going to like that. I said, oh, that's his son. It was just the way he said it. It was just the way he said it to let you know. I said, mm, that's his son. So I don't know, you know, with Tyler Perry, you never know whether it means something or it doesn't mean something. So I don't know if that's going to come back to bite Andy in the ass or that was just something to fill time because it happens with, with, with these Tyler Perry shows sometimes. Fatima and Zach. Zach comes over to the house. He's in a better mood. He's feeling good. Him and Fatima get into it. They have this. Fatima was talking about not getting her hair wet. She ended up getting her hair wet. Which sets up the next day her calling Karen saying, can I come in for a hair appointment? Which, of course, y'all know where that's leading. But anyway, so there's that. Um, Karen and um, um, her man, they have a whole conversation about being celibate and not having sex. And, you know, whether, you know, she going to be able to do this or not. Whether how they going, you know, are they going to be able to stick with it. And how, you know, she, you know... Why, you know, you try your shoes on before you buy them type conversation. And, you know, he tells her, listen, you know, I know it's hard, but we can make it, you know, it, it is what it is. And so he ends up staying over again. And, you know, of course, he wakes up with some morning wood. And Karen is like, I ain't going to be able to do this. Like, you laying there looking all sexy and you ready for me. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this. So then they get to having this whole conversation about Zach. And he's showing that he... It's kind of jealous a little bit. Like, he's showing some some jealous tendencies about Zach or whatever. Oh, you still love him, don't you? You're still in love with him. And she was like, ain't nobody even saying Zach's name. Where you even getting that from? Ain't nobody in love with Zach. Yes, you. Well, you say his name in your sleep. She was like, I do not say his name in my sleep. What are you talking about? Like, you know I don't love him, especially after what he did to me. Ain't nobody tripping off of Zach. What is wrong with you? But he is going off about her being in love with Zach. And that's how I know he the one that set Zach up. He the one that set Zach up because all of a sudden now you so worried about being jealous of Zach. And I was like, where this coming from? Because we ain't never heard nothing about you being jealous of Zach before. As a matter of fact, you've been the, actually the total opposite and been real cool about the whole Zach situation. Now all of a sudden we seeing these jealous streaks. And I was like, here we go with this bullshit with Tyler Perry turning these characters that we like into characters that we don't like. But okay, I'm going to roll with you a little bit. I'm going to roll with you. Now... Next thing you know, Karen says she on her way to work, work. but when um, Fatima calls her, she's at the police station filing a police report on Zach. I say, here we go. Um, now, let me say this. Let me be clear. If I'm Karen, and I honestly believe that my ex-boyfriend, who I held down through thick and thin, who cheated on me, who gave me STDs, who thought he got somebody pregnant on me, and I'm done done, like I am done done, and then I get my credit card bill, and I got $5,000 worth of charges on my credit card, and the credit card company tells me he was the one that did it, 
I'm probably filing a police report too. And we could talk about keeping a black man out of jail and all that's messed up, whatever, whatever. But if that black man stole $5,000 from me, I'm sorry. I'm probably doing the same thing. The thing is, we just know that ain't what, what went down. We know that Zach got set up. We have the benefit of that angle. And I understand that her friends are trying to say, listen, Zach might be a lot of things, but Zach wouldn't do that. But again, when you mad, you mad. And that's your money. It ain't their money. It's her money. So I I can't be mad at Karen from that perspective. But I mean, for the perspective that we know Zach ain't doing and he being set up, it's like, damn, girl, you couldn't wait. You couldn't wait till you got the proof back from Sabrina's friend that's getting you that illegal proof. Because let's be clear, ain't nobody working for a credit card company legally giving you that information. But it's whatever. We, we hook our friends up all the time and get them shit we ain't supposed to get them. Let's be clear. You know we do. Y'all know y'all do. Your girl call you and be like, listen, I need this, this, that, and the other. You know y'all be hooking y'all friends up. Anyway, so Zach is on his way to work. He gets pulled over because he a black man driving a car and he got pulled over. They run his name and, of course, now he got a warrant out for his arrest. And y'all know how the rest of that story goes. They pull him out the car, they arrest him, and he's like, what are you talking about a warrant? I didn't do anything. I ain't do nothing. I ain't do nothing. Now, the only thing I'm going to say about that is Zach... As a black man who been in the system, you know how the drill goes. Like, all that sitting there arguing with him, it don't matter. He said he got a warrant for your arrest. You know good and damn well where you going. You going to jail, bruh. Let the, they'll straighten it up down there. But what you what you don't need to do is be doing all this back and forth argument. Because you ain't going to win that argument. You just ain't going to win. Now, Sabrina ends up calling Danny. And um, Preston is there. And Danny answers the phone just to let her know that Preston is there so that all that y'all was talking last night about Preston ghosting me and, oh, maybe it's true. I just want to let y'all know that he laid up in my bed right now and it ain't true, okay? Um, and again, kudos for Danny for standing in it saying, listen, I know my man and I know he wouldn't do that to me and, you know, oh well. Sabrina wants to talk about Calvin and Danny is not here for it. And you know what, Danny? Neither am I. Neither am I? Y'all, that's pretty much what it was. That was the episode. Y'all let me know what y'all think. Drop it in the comments. Peace. This episode wasn't so bad. I mean, this episode wasn't so bad. Alright. 